Here it becomes obvious where the Alpha V2 really shines. You get upgraded features along with a lifetime warranty while still being the same price as all the other competitors who offer none of that. Didn't load any bullets in this one. Hey, what's up my favorite lightning wielding gunslingers? Today I got a cool rifle review for you that's actually from a group of guys that are local to me. What's interesting and kind of unique about this one though is that it's built around this whole mantra of giving everything you could possibly want without costing a billion dollars. That platform we'll be looking at today is the MASP Industries Alpha V2 in the 13.9 pin and welded version. Now, MASP is doing some pretty eyebrow-raising stuff with this platform, too. Now, like most others, they do also offer a sub-MOA guarantee for all their barrels. But here they actually, wow, I know it's crazy, verify the accuracy before sending it to you instead of just blanket saying they're all perfect. But the real crazy one is the lifetime guarantee, meaning they'll replace any part of the firearm from the first owner to the last. So this seems a bit different than some other <laughs> Gunworks companies that are charging you like five times the cost of a product just because they check the torque of a screw. Straight out of the gate, it seems like you get all the parts you want and they're warrantied forever. This seems a little crazy. Now, like most of you probably are, I was a little bit skeptical of this until I went to go pick up this rifle and visited the mask guys. And they actually had a 5.56 just sitting there that was all blown up because somebody put a 300 blackout round in there and the mask guys, they understood and they stood by their guarantee and they were putting the whole rifle back together so that consumer could have a working rifle again. And that was kind of the proof of the pudding for me. If, if that doesn't inspire some confidence in you that they're gonna stand by it, then I don't know what does. Now, before we turn to this thing, let's take a moment thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored in part by the upcoming new website, OpticSwap. In a world of shady dealings on marketplaces where you likely get ripped off, OpticSwap aims to provide you a safe and secure site to buy, sell, and trade your high-end thermals, optics, and night vision. So whether you're looking to save a bit on a used set or purchase new, or just trade out something to upgrade, OpticSwap is creating a new space to provide safety and security to your purchases. I've also heard about a hundred horror stories about people getting ghosted after sending like multi-thousand dollar payments. So if you're looking to expand your assortment of different optics or night vision, make sure to check out Optic Swap so you can do that in a much more safe and secure way. It's also impressive that Optic Swap is looking to build up this community of both firearms and tactical gear when so many other companies are really pretty intent on tearing it down. So big thanks to them and big thanks to all the support here at TLD for making reviews like this happen. Now, I'm excited to get the Alpha V2 on the bench and see what this thing's actually all about. But you know, I always like to delay. Before we do, let's, let's just do a couple first shots and see my initial impressions. Now, straight out of the gate, the performance of the ELF trigger really impressed me, but it was the lightweight of the entire system that gave me that immediate shock. It made the system feel like a patrol rifle with all the features of a competition rifle. Now, I really, really would like a <laughs> Ambi mag release, but hey, that's kind of more of like a lefty world problem. But I'll quit stalling, let's go over everything and then get to our tests. Now, here is the MASP Alpha V2, and I immediately think it's the craziest thing to see a billet receiver set, match grade trigger, silencer compatible muzzle device, and Cerakote to give you a total package straight out of the gate. Let's turn to all the pieces though, and starting with the muzzle device, we see the MASP V6 wave style brake device that has three large side ports and six ports along the top to keep recoil flat even when you're shooting incredibly fast. Muzzle devices can throw gas everywhere, but I think what was totally crazy about this is even when I was just absolutely ripping through shots like you're gonna see in some of the speed shooting, the red dot just wasn't moving at all. I had a dot on it at the time. We didn't, we swept this out. I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you. Also built into the muzzle device is the ASR thread pitch adapter, allowing you to direct thread on silencers or use various hub adapters for this connection style. Now, I have some dead air cans and some Griffin dual lock cans, so I don't have the right connection system in order to connect into this. But Mass was nice enough to throw a can on this setup for me and show me what this Alpha V2 was really designed to do. 
I will say I really thought this was a strong point for the whole system, where you have that really, really nicely designed muzzle device for the recoil control, or you could just put on a silencer and have a more overall pleasant shooting experience and have it all already installed, already set up, and <laughs> it's all warrantied. Continuing going over the rifle, we also have our 13.9 pin and welded one in seven twist chrome molly vanadium barrel with a mid-length gas system to give you a great balance of speed and lowered felt recoil. The gas block is also low profile, allowing for a compact handguard design. We see the same custom Cerakote design with M-lock slots placed on the three, six, and nine o'clock position. Now, I added in the rail scales grip and emissary handguards, so those actually aren't included. I do highly recommend adding these guys in if you wanna take this whole setup up a level. Now, for the handguard, I did find the top of this rail a little bit interesting. Along the top is only a small Picatinny section to connect in your IR lasers like our D-Ball D2, but the remaining pick rail has been removed and replaced with M-Lock along the top. I was at first concerned by this until I realized I could just connect my Unity, whatever this is, directly onto the top rail now. I even tried out the new laser speed I was testing and you could easily add in a tape switch with adhesive due to the flat top design. With this version being a 13.9, kind of that 16 inch overall length, I don't think it's that much of a problem, but I would say on like an 18 inch, I would probably wanna have those extra pick rails in case I wanted to add in like a thermal or night vision optic, I could do that as this design would make that a little bit more complicated. The top rail being M-lock instead of Picatinny means you also have to do some like forward thinking in your switch design when you start to put everything together too. So you kind of have to think ahead of yourself, like what switches are M-lock? Don't, don't do the Picatinny ones. I do like to use a lot of cloud defensive lights and they connect in via Picatinny. So I would have to connect them in, like tape them down with some sort of adhesive, same as I would do like a IR switch or something like that. Now, one cool bit with the handguard is that it uses a standard Allen key to hold it in place with the side set screw to lock it all in, along with the anti-rotational tabs to keep your handguard accessories from losing zero. Now, because the platform you're watching this on assumes you're a complete moron, YouTube gets super pissy if I touch any firearms with tools, so I can't show you how to take that apart. I mean, God forbid you knew how to turn screws by yourself. Like, how stupid do they think you are exactly? Whatever. The Allen key is super smart though, as it actually pushes against the barrel nut to tighten the handguard against the receiver set too. It's just super smart stuff. Moving to the upper, we see the same billet and Cerakote design with a full pick rail along the top. Now, one interesting thing is the forward assist has been removed to give you a sleeker overall design. Now, most gun buffs kind of already know that the forward assist was added later on after it had been adopted for a long period of time, and the forward assist was never part of Eugene Stoner's original design. It was actually added by the Army because the M1 they had at the time often wouldn't go into battery and they'd have to like knock it forward to get it to work properly. But adding it to the AR setup later on as the Army wanted it was mostly a psychological thing so, so the user thought they could just clear any problem they had, but in reality, it didn't do much of anything as jamming around forward into the bolt face rarely solves any problem at all. So yeah, if you're in the army where they can't afford to give you an actual cleaning kit, then yeah, you probably do want a forward assist, but otherwise you could probably do without in the actual original Eugene Stoner design. Looking at the top, I threw on a Scalar Works 1.93 mount with the Crimson Trace 1-6 Hardline Pro with the BDC Comp Reticle. I had also used the Lead and Steel PB3 for our short range testing, but swapped later in the day as the LPVO is more suited to test accuracy. I will say the Lead and Steel mount screw just totally shredded on me, so I'm not sure what's up with that. The PB3 was a nice bright dot in a large clear viewing window, so overall I did like that optic. I want to test a few setups Mike from Huntfish Shoot recommended to me, so I threw the PB3 on an EOTech Voodoo to test some cool stuff later. <laughs> I'll do my best to get some optic reviews done eventually, but I like that lead and steel, the PB3, a whole lot more as a rifle optic than I did as like a huge pistol optic. And I'll also say that our LPVO that we used with an MOA BDC on a 39 barrel with 77 grain bullets, well, it made for some interesting aiming when we went out to 600 yards. 
Now I will say I did really like the Hardline Pro because it seemed like it had a super forgiving focal length to give this incredibly fast reticle acquisition. I just need to put that scope on a more standard length rifle so all the reticle markings actually line up correctly. You're gonna see when we do the actual accuracy footage out to range. Moving to our charging handle, we see another unique one with the throttle charging handle. Here we see a large barrel design that I actually really came to love, particularly when paired with the lower height optic, it's easy to still reach in and use the charging handle. Now this is something I've noticed with some lower profile charging handles is that when you have an optic on there, they're often not even usable or you gotta jam your whole hand in there just to try to get it to work. As a lefty with a low optic compact charging handle and a forward assist, you just gotta destroy your hand to try to use the damn thing. I just don't find the low profile ones to be ideal, particularly when I'm often needing this when I'm dealing with reloads or some sort of other malfunction at the same time. Now, yes, that increase in functionality also means you could hook this onto your gear easier, so that's something to be aware of. The charging handle also has a gas port facing forward to direct gases away from the user. Now, moving over to the lower, we have that same clean line look of that billet Cerakote design. We see nice upgraded takedown pins with a dimpled backside. For controls, we see an upgraded mag release button that feels nice to the hand, but on the other side is just a standard mil-spec along with a standard mil-spec bolt catch bolt release. Now, as I teased about earlier in the video, as a lefty, I'd probably want to add in an ambi mag release. I think the bolt catch bolt release is just fine, but you'll see during the controls testing that just having this single side where I have to use my right hand to do it um, makes the reloads and all that significantly slower for me. Along the bottom of the lower, we also see a built-in flared magwell in the billet design. The flared magwell worked really well to give you that competition edge to just flow mags a ton easier. Next, let's take a look at this beauty with the ELF match grade trigger. I love what ELF has been putting out and it's crazy to see this set up straight out of the box. The match grade version has an incredibly clean break with no creep combined with a super short reset to give you a great trigger to do some insane stuff with this Alpha V2. Recently, ELF has really just won me over with all their triggers, and we did a review of their Apex, where that trigger just ate through every single thing we threw at it without a single hiccup. I'll put a link to it up here if you wanna check out that review of that trigger to see what made me a believer. Finishing up with the furniture, the 13.9 pin and welded version is a bit different and uses the Magpul MOE grip and SOK stock, while the standard Alpha V2 uses B5 furniture if you want that instead. Good grief, I think that's everything and I think it all looks great on paper, but let's see how it actually does in our tests. Let's do the first test with the overall shooting feel and recoil. As we're using a standard AR platform, I didn't expect anything wild. But as noted, the lightweight frame of the Alpha V2 was immediately apparent. And when combined with the V6 Wave muzzle device, it made for a platform that seemed to push a competitive focus right into the duty world. Now I will say that the Wave design in the muzzle device made it quite gassy, but the port in the charging handle kept it all away from my face, so I didn't notice it at all. When firing though, I could definitely feel that gas hitting my arm. So yeah, I could tell you definitely that it's working. Now, does a 13.9 have more felt recoil than a 16 inch? Well, yeah. And realistically, I would probably throw in a bootleg carrier to really soften this Alpha V2 up, like on my 12.5 NV setup. Oh, I just realized we're supposed to do the weight test first. Now I have everything all set up, so as I have it configured, it's about eight pounds with the scope and all the bits. But if we strip it all down, we see a naked weight of about six pounds and oh, three ounces. Now I'm sure the weight's gonna go up as we add in lights, illuminators, and silencers, and all the other crap. But the whole thing feels nice and balanced. It doesn't feel like I'm trying to hold up a boat anchor like you feel in a lot of those piston weapon systems. Those are, those are wonderful. There's nothing quite like having a whole gun that just wants to flop forward on you. <laughs> I'm joking, it's not wonderful at all. Those piston systems are way overrated. But let's move on to the next test and let's do a oh, break-in and reliability. Here, MASP had already pre-fired and verified operations, so there was no break-in. I do also wanna note that from fast firing to accuracy testing with multiple different ammo, we had not one single malfunction or issue to report. Badass warranty, no break-in, no malfunctions. 
I'm, I'm pretty impressed, folks. Now let's keep it going though. Next, let's look at controls and we'll just throw in the mag drop test. That was from some other stuff anyway, and just knock out two in one. I found the controls to be clean and went without a hiccup, but you know, standard mil spec. I had no issues, but I did find myself looking for a left side mag release to really push the speed up a level. For righties though, straight out of the box, I think you're gonna be happy with this whole setup. The magwell also made for easy reinsertion of the magazine, no matter what goofy stuff I was testing, and all the mags drop cleanly when released, so nothing to note there. I think the magwell is my favorite part because it helped to make me not look like an idiot when I was doing the reloads with that DPC cantable mag pouch. Things overall are looking pretty good so far though, but let's see if they can put their money where their mouth is with the accuracy test. Here I set up on the 100 yard range and we first tested out the sub MOA guarantee. I was using some AAC 77 grain, so nothing totally insane. And even with me not lining up the reticle the same spot every time for some reason, I was still able to shoot a nice group at one MOA. Moving out to distance, it was easy to clean up at 300 yards, then step out even further to 430 and make some great hits. Just for some fun, I even stepped out this 13.9 setup out to 600 yards to ring the steel and show how this platform can still reach out nice and far. It did take me a second to get on that plate as the BDC is a good bit off with our setup, but once I had the dope and everything figured out and dialed in, it was easy to hit that target just over and over, even at 600 yards. So accuracy to me overall was in that fairly good to impressive category, particularly in that shorter barrel. Now let's move into our next category and this one where the Alpha V2 does extremely well, that's the coolness factor. With clean billet lines, a skeletonized elf trigger, and a Cerakote design you get to select on purchase, this has to be one of the coolest rifles you can get from a new to a veteran user. Now, I know some of us like to tinker, but this one's just done, it's straight out of the box. Does it get much cooler than that? And everything that it does leads us really heavily into our last test category, the competitive market. Here it becomes obvious where the Alpha V2 really shines. You get upgraded features along with a lifetime warranty while still being the same price as all the other competitors who offer none of that. I didn't load any bullets in this one. There we go. It also comes with two magazines and its own soft case. So from a bang to your buck perspective, it's like insanity level. Plus they'll fix your barrel if you wear it out, along with having match grade parts. Crazy. I think that's it though, and that's all the tests. So what are my final thoughts? The Alpha V2 impressed me not in just one thing, but in its combination of parts, from unique Cerakote, to a match grade trigger, to a smart handguard design. Every bit was well thought out to give you a rifle with the speed and precision for competition, with the build quality for patrol and duty use, all wrapped in a lifetime warranty. It's just a really smart pick when you don't know exactly what you want, but you know you want to upgrade to performance parts at some point. And in that case, just get this. It's all there and it's all warrantied for the same cost as the other guys. Hell, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I saw the factory. I'm pretty sure they make parts for the other guys. Now stay tuned though, as we take things up a level with the MASP executive in six millimeter arc to see what that platform can really do. I know there's a lot of other YouTube reviewers who have looked at that already, but I wanna see if that cartridge is really that zero to a thousand solution to be both CQB and long range precision. We'll find out together though, and I also wanna see from all the optics that I have, which one makes the best setup from like an LPVO or like a three to 18 with a piggyback. We'll, we'll do all that together. But I hope this review of the MASP Industries Alpha V2 was helpful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our YouTube and Patreon supporters. You make it possible we can test out these rifles, show them off to you and see what they're all about and see which ones are really worth your money. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments and subscribes. Comment down below what you thought about this Alpha V2 and what other rifle you think would compete with it because I wanna put them head to head. All right though, take care everyone, wash out. You know, it was a good day today. I had like one airplane, no cicadas. It's quiet, it's wonderful. Yeah, I really like this.
This is really good. I think this is probably, you know, the IWI is another one I really like for a starter, but this is also right up there on that list where you get just a lot of crazy stuff for not a whole lot of money. Uh, all right, what are we working on next? Oh, oh, I need to know from you guys. I wanna know if you guys wanna see some IR illuminators. I have a laser speed coming up and I also have some new stuff from Primary Arms. I have their GLX and I have the uh, MD25 Gen 2 that I haven't shown you yet. So let me know also down in the comments what you guys wanna see if it's more IR illuminators like laser speed or if you guys wanna see more optics, you guys let me know. Otherwise, make sure to join us on the live, make sure to join us on Instagram and Twitter and all those things. I try to sneak stuff out there so if you're not watching us there, you can sometimes see some sneak peeks of things I'm like working on in real time over on those platforms. All right though, I gotta go in. I'm gonna enjoy the day, it's actually nice. It's not crazy hot and annoying. So yeah, you guys go enjoy it too. <laughs> Gotta go. It's, it's the end of the video. You gotta go. Gotta go away. <laughs>